Sorry about the delay, everyone. Um, <laughs> We just, a few people have been stuck in traffic and it's, it's good to wait 10 minutes and we've got vaguely um, full theatre. So great. Thanks for coming everybody. So I'm uh, Darren Bagnall, so I'm the head of school now for three years and eight days. <laughs> feels, feels much longer. It's, it's, been, it's been a busy, a busy three years and um, I can't imagine what 43 years feels like here. Um, but it probably, probably feels more like 120 years or something. But yeah, thanks everybody everybody for coming. Um, I'm just going to, just by way of a kind of a, a very short review, head of school perspective on how the year has gone for us so far and if I can get everything working here that will be, that'll be good. Um, but just to remind you, or just to remind all me of the agenda today then, so uh, just a quick welcome by me and then I'm going to introduce Martin, Stuart, Alistair and then Muriel um, to tell us a little bit about uh, what they've been doing um, this year or in fact over the last um, number of years of their lives. Um, but I'll do me first, so I think 2016 has been a really, really good year for anyone that cares about renewable energy and photovoltaics, um, if you like on a global perspective. Um, it's been a good year for the school, it's, I think, I mean, it's been a good year for the university as well, so I think from a global, a global picture, um, and we had a great talk here in this very room last week by Jeremy Leggett that was in what feels in terms of politics has been a challenging year with Brexit, if you're from England and probably the rest of the world, and with um, certain presidential elections uh, in the US. It, sometimes it feels like climate deniers are winning and the fossil fuel industry is winning, but Jeremy Leggett came and spoke to us here last week and he was, he was, he was brilliant. He gave us a real great sweeping um, talk around the reasons why renewable energy and, and photovoltaics now has traction that um, cannot, cannot really be stopped. He's, he now sees it as an unstoppable um, progress and, and the world is going to change over the next few years and he was kind enough to say that in part that was due to the work that's gone on, gone on here. Of course the global picture if you like if you look at the industry it looks great <laughs> still feels politically challenging in Australia. I still find, find it's amazing that we're about to build a train line, it seems, uh, from a coal mine to a port that's near the Barrier Reef. So, you know, there's still a, a, you know, Australia still seems a very crazy place at times, even if you're from England with Brexit. <laughs> you know, the other, the other great political story for us this year, and we played a big, you know, many people here played a big part in this, is that, you know, we found out finally that Arena was going to stay intact. And it lost some money, but we could not have, hoped really that it would keep 800 million in funding going forward um, and maintain the ability to provide grants particularly to universities so several people here I don't know if Richard's probably here somewhere but you know we ran a big campaign some grassroots level some politicians visiting lots of meetings lots of diplomacy but we all yeah thanks to Richard you know I think we all played a part really in, in making sure that arena had the chance to continue and this this really gives us opportunity over the next few years as a, as a research you know led institution to um, to keep up keep up the good work really the other great thing is really watching um, vice chancellor Ian Jacobs um, strategy 2025 for UNSW really come into play now and and one of the things that the Dean and the Vice-Chancellor have, have always been clear about is their willingness and desire to invest in our work and invest in our school. So the kind of first manifestations of that have really come out over the last six months. So, you know, with 12 million of um, equipment funds that we've, we've been given effectively over the last four or five months that will ensure, among other things, that we get to complete a whole um, hydrogenated perk pilot line in the surf building and that's that's a great a great thing for us and people like Stuart and many others have worked tirelessly he would say over six or seven years to make this a reality so thanks for everyone who helped to helped us um, get that one over the line um, we've also now got effectively given a hunting license I've been told it's not even a, a permission to go and recruit I've been told it's now a, a KP T on me next year to find four new academic recruits into the school and four the year after and when um, when the Dean said that wasn't ambitious enough I said well it's because it's kind of hard to find all the people you want at the quality you want um, but that's you know that's a new mission for us to go and find new academics so effectively looking to almost double the size of the school over the next couple of years um, 
and really one of our aims has to be to try and double the number of students so that we can kind of spread our message further. Our greatest output isn't our research really, it's actually the, the people we send out into the world, many, many of whom are represented here today. The other big kind of news around strategy 2025 is the, the university is going to move to a, a, a trimester system, in fact a three and a half semesters a year system. Um, so I've invoked an idea of a strategy 2019. Um, so in 2019 we'll have three and a half semesters. It gives us a chance to, if you like, review and maybe um, change and revolutionise our educational portfolio and I think by 2019 I want all, it's going to be a challenge, <laughs> get all of our courses in blended learning mode with substantial online resources which you know, kids enjoy these days and, and get most out of and I think that's a big opportunity uh, for us over the next couple of years to develop you know, even better educational um, materials than we, we've, we've managed to date. Uh, the other kind of big part of what we're doing is like, you know, trying to get together an all-encompassing research vision for what we want to achieve as a school and, and, you know, so what can we do, what do we want to do uh, and what do we need to do it. Now, I kind of like the idea of the round figure of, you know, what, what would we do if we had a hundred million dollars. If we ask ourselves that question then we can go out and answer it well to ourselves, we can then try and sell that to other people. So um, just at the same time as we're trying to pull a vision together, Martin has made an application for one of the MacArthur hundred million dollar or hundred plus um, applications. We're, 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 we've passed the, uh, the first stage of that process along with probably 1800 other applications so we, it's long odds but what I like about the way you know Martin's applied himself to thinking about what we would do with 100 million and really it's a twofold approach now we need to think about improving devices and device technology our core research work but we also need to start to educate um, installers users equipment manufacturers module manufacturers around the world so we kind of really you know, train generations of people in developing countries, if you like, to build their own um, renewable energy systems. So this, you know, the beauty of the idea is it, it, it plays to our strengths, device technology and educational leadership. And uh, going forward, that's the kind of thing, that's really where we want to build, play on our strengths and try and change the world. Meanwhile, this year, I think we've had four or five or six world records, depending on how you, how you count them. So I just thought I'd put one slide together that, just kind of, I mean, <laughs> with apologies for anyone I don't mention because a great many people have done great things and been recognised in lots of ways this year. But um, certainly Mark and Gina and Anita have all, they're really like the faces of solar energy in Australia, it seems, if not worldwide over the last, um, over the course of the last 12 months. And even now, like Anita seems to be on the front of every, every <laughs> magazine and newspaper that wants to talk about solar energy. So we broke those three world records. I think we had a quantum dot world record along the way. We had other solar conversion efficiency world records. Um, recognition for Bram and Torsten and Martin with various awards and um, fellowships and medals. It's been a really, really great year for us and, and we're looking forward to an even better 2017 if, if that's at all possible. So thank you everybody for everyone that's been a part of that. And again, thanks everyone else for coming here today. I'll go back to our agenda and I will welcome Martin to the stage to give us our first talk on the impact of UNSW on the PV industry. So thank you, Martin.